Hey guys, what is going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video for you. This one is going to be part two of our uh, last climb up with, to Diamond 1 with Tri-Brigade Zodiac. Uh, these games again are going to be from Diamond 4 to Diamond 1. Um, as we saw with the Adam Emancipator videos, I took that up to Diamond 4. And then, yeah, I used uh, tri for pretty much the entire rest of the climb. Like I mentioned in part 1, I did sprinkle in a little bit of Adam Emancipator, but not enough and not enough interesting games with them to really justify you know, dedicating a, a whole other video to part of the climb with them. So, um, yeah, it was mostly done with good old Tri-Brigade Zodiac here. Uh, for those of you who didn't watch part one, this is pretty much, actually not even pretty much, this is still exactly the same build that I used at the start of Season 4, uh, including the three droplets and two Nibiru, which came in very much handy against all of the Drytrons out on the ladder there. Um, yeah, especially with, you know, Ben 10 going to one here. At the time of this video coming out, actually probably like, tomorrow <laughs> if it uh, hasn't happened already I think that should be right right I'm just trying to figure out in my head six seven eight yeah so this video should be coming out either the day of or before that hit goes through anyway whatever that doesn't matter oh uh, what does matter is that we are at diamond one ah! <laughs> and we managed to get there within the first a uh, little over four days of the season there so um, yeah, I didn't include more tech specifically against Drytron. Again, I touched on this in the last part, but I wanted to keep the deck still pretty generally focused and not, you know, tech exclusively against Drytron. Like I mentioned earlier, I almost took out the two Imperms for two drone locks, but uh, I ultimately decided to keep them in. And I'm really glad that I did because I saw enough decks that weren't Drytron that I think these Imperms were definitely better. Excuse me, the two uh, drone locks would be. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of other questions people generally ask about the build. The second Nibiru is uh, definitely a flex spot. You don't have to have two Nibiru here. I think one is totally fine. I really like two, and I've really liked two for quite a while. Again, I wasn't doing two Nibiru just for this part of the climb. Um, it was definitely in there beforehand, because I think Nibiru is just in general a really, really good card. I mean, of course, it's also really good against Drytrons, but... Um, I think Nibiru is a very, very good card, and decks like Tri-Brigade Zodiac that can afford to play a lot of Disruption should definitely be playing at least one Nibiru, if not two. Um, it's obviously also going to kind of depend on the rest of your build, but uh, like I said, I really personally like the second Nibiru here. Yeah, and two Imperm might seem a bit weird. Imperm isn't a card you usually see two of, you usually see three of it. Um, and I think I see most people doing like three Imperm, three Droplet, and then, I don't know about most, but I see enough, a lot of people do like two Revolt. Uh, three impermanent, three drop, but I actually did kind of considering, uh, considering, I kind of did consider cutting a uh, third revolt and putting in a third imperm instead, but opening the revolt is so, so good, and it opens up so many different combo lines. There's actually a small part of me, I don't know, you guys in the comments let me know if this is like a video that would actually be helpful, or if it would be like kind of just egregious, but... I almost want to make another Tri-Brigade combo deck, except it's combos that you can do when you already have Revolt in hand. Because depending on your hand, you can actually do some pretty disgusting things if you've already opened Revolt and you don't need to go into Bear Brum. Um, that might be like, because I didn't want to include plays like that in the initial combo guide. I wanted to keep the, the, the basic, the base combo guide, you know, basic, like very generalized, but let me know if you guys want to see like a quote unquote advanced combo guide where it's like, okay, in these scenarios you can do this as opposed to like general combos. But uh, in any case here, let's go ahead and go through the list card by card as we always do. And then we'll take a look at some games here. We've got three Tri-Brigade Nerval, three Maxi, two, whoops, two Tri-Brigade Keras, three Tri-Brigade Kit, three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, one Zodiac Whiptail, one Zodiac Thoroughblade, one Zodiac Ram Ram, Three Tri-Brigade Fractal, two Nibiru the Primal Being, one Harpy's Feather Duster, one Pot of Desires, one Lightning Storm, three Fire Formation Tenki, two Called by the Grave, three Forbidden Droplet, two Infinite Impermanence, and three Tri-Brigade Revolt. Then down here in the extra deck, we've got uh, Zodiac Tiger Mortar, Zodiac Dreadant, Zodiac Borbo, Zodiac Chakanane, Divine Arsenal Ah Zeus Sky Thunder, Salaman Great Almirage, uh, Ancient Warriors Oath Double Dragon Lords. Tri-Brigade Ferajit, the Baron Blossom, Tri-Brigade Bearbrum, the Rampant Rampager, Erase Vulgar, the Desperate Doom Eagle, Tri-Brigade Rugal, the Silver Sheller, Appalooja, Bow the Goddess, Access Code Talker, and then of course to Tri-Brigade Shurg, the Ominous Omen. 
Um, oh shoot, I just had something in mind. Oh yeah, I saw, it was not really a comment about the deck itself, but sometimes I get comments asking like why I go through the list card by card at the start of every video. Um, for those who are wondering, I just do it because, you know, before I started doing that and also putting the actual deck list in the description, I'd always see lots of comments asking like, hey, what's this card? What's this card? Like, what are, what are, what are these, like, what are these specific cards? Like the one next to Harpies so or the one next to... So I like to just go through the list and have it typed out for you guys just for ease of access there. But, uh, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at some games. Okay, so this first game is going to be against Ad Emancipators, and it's a bit of a doozy. Uh, eight turns. I actually don't remember this how this played out quite off the top of my head, even though it was you know just a few hours ago. But I mean, when you so much happened in these last few hours with games, you know, I I couldn't be bothered to remember every single one. But uh, oh, okay, I think I do remember this one. All right, so yeah, opponent's going to lead with Foolishing the Revival Golem and bringing it back. Revival Golem, I do have to admit, is a little bit better of an extender than I gave it credit for. I just don't know that I would play Miracle Rupture, you know, to use it. But uh. Yeah, so then they summoned the Oli, and fortunately, because I didn't open any hand traps here, but fortunately my opponent opened a relatively dead hand, so that's really good for me. Uh, now, they do, are, they do of course, still have plays, uh, and actually, opponent's going to have a Jet Synchron here. Uh, so this is a tech line that I hadn't really heard about or even really seen before this game. I think I saw another uh, Adam Pater deck using these uh, tech options as well. But they're playing Jet Synchron and then Aurora Dawn in their extra deck. That's that's really interesting, and with Roxy's going to two, there's a part of me that wonders if that's actually better than the Prank Kids line. I don't know if it is. I'm I don't know if I'm gonna test it out just yet. But uh, this game, this this opponent gave me a lot to consider as far as building my own Adam Emancipator deck. It's always nice when you can learn like that from your opponents. I love playing against somebody and being like, "Whoa, they're using this that way. I never even considered that." It's like the same when you guys comment, you know, and you're like, you know, oh, you could do this this way. And I'm like, oh, I never would have considered that. I just, I love that aha moment. I think that's the main thing I love about gaming in general, not even just Yu-Gi-Oh!, but like, Yu-Gi-Oh!, it happens in deck building, and it happens in individual games, it happens outside of the games while you're watching games, while you're reading combo lines, like, so many aha moments where you're just like, oh, I didn't realize you could play that that way, that's awesome. But yeah, so my opponent does have a maxi here, which is definitely not ideal for me, but I'm going to still want to cut off as many of my opponent's plays as possible. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kit for the Race Vulgar, and then go into Access Code Talker. Only going to give my opponent two draws here, but I'm going to use the Access Code Talker to go ahead and pop their face down, which only ends up being a droplet, but still good to get rid of. I'm then going to run over Baron, and then since I can't finish my opponent off here and the access code is you know, not going to do much during my opponent's turn, I'm just going to banish it and pop my opponent's Roradon. Because having a Link 3 up is going to give them access to so many different plays, like with this Block Dragon, had I not banished it or destroyed it. So, definitely really glad I got rid of the Roradon. It might seem a bit weird to banish your own you know, 5300 access code talker to do something like that, but it's totally worth it in scenarios like that. Alright, so I'm actually going to lead with the Nerval into Almirage, and the reason I'm doing that is because I didn't really show this off, but when I activated that first Desires, I actually banished to Nerval. So, the reason I'm summoning Nerval instead of, uh, oh, that's the reason I'm summoning Nerval instead of Kit for the Almirage play here. Alright, when I put a go, uh, the gates to that, I'm going to go ahead and then Desires, and then, fortunately, I draw into a Tri-type, although at this point, I'm pretty sure I'm just out of main deck monsters, like... Between my Banish and my Graveyard, I, I think I'm literally out of Zodiac and tri -Brigade monsters, both. Let's see, there's the Whiptail, the Ram Ram, I think I saw the Thoroughblade somewhere in here. Unless that was in the Grave? No, maybe I do still have the Thoroughblade. Okay, so I do still have that, but... Oh uh, yeah, we're able to banish our opponent's Black Dragon, fortunately, with a Shurig, and then we've got our Droplet set up here with the Almirage, so that's good. Our opponent's going to go ahead and Special Summon their Analyzer, uh, but like I said, we fortunately have the Droplet here, and literally it came down to the having the Almirage mattered so, so much here. So that's one thing I see some people do that I actually wanted to stop and talk about for a second here because of scenarios like this. Sometimes I see people popping Almirage um, just to, like, get, you know, free up the Link, the Extract Monster Zone. Um, and you don't always have to do that. It's definitely not necessary if you set your link zones up right. They're, they're occasionally. Occasionally, depending on what links you're summoning and what the situation is, you might have to do it. But more often than not, you can set up your Almirage uh, in a way that you can continue to link summon and have zones open. 
Um, but I wanted to talk about that here because having the Almirage and not just blindly popping it to free up the space was so, so crucial for the droplet here. I mean, granted, in the scenario I was in, you probably wouldn't just blindly pop it anyway because I didn't have many other plays after that, but um, I don't just mean that for this game. I mean that generally speaking as well. Like, you should try to save Almirage if you can. All right, so we drew an Ash as well. We're just the luckiest player in the world drawing these outs to go alongside our Shurig here. Um, but our opponent doesn't draw another Adamant Speed of Tuner, they just draw, you know, a, a presumably a bluff back row because Adamants don't really have that many reactive back rows. And sure enough, it is not enough to stop our Shurig from attacking directly and then clenching the game. So it's funny, that game was actually eight turns. I assumed it was going to be a long back and forth, but the end of it there was kind of like, oh, the game kind of just petered out as both our opponent and I kind of ran down on answers. But all right, let's go ahead and watch the next game. Okay, this next game is going to be against good old Drytron. <laughs> of course, what else but Drytron uh, during this first week of Season 5 here. It's definitely just like the name of the game, you know? Alright, so we look at our hand though, and even though we're going second, we've got a Maxi and a Dash. So that's obviously super duper good for us. Our opponent's going to start off with Thuban. We're of course going to respond with Maxi. Our opponent's got an Orange Herald and the Eva too, so that's like, ah, that's super unfortunate. It's like, literally the worst thing they could have had. Well, I mean, the best thing in their case, the worst thing for us. You know what I mean. Alright, so they end up adding the Ben 10 here, naturally, and then of course they get the Eva's effect too. Uh, they only get one add, but they are going to get to add an Orange Herald, so... Uh, that is always, you know, a little bit annoying. Uh, we're going to go ahead and Ash this Aldehyba and just hope that our opponent doesn't have something to use the Orange Herald with. And it doesn't look like they do, or maybe at least they're not, you know, willing to use something with it. But uh, um, that's still going to allow our opponent to get a Diviner, though. So, I mean, we're not stop we've not stopped our opponent altogether, but um, we have stopped them at least a decent bit. And in fact, as I see here, they're going for a level 8 Synchro, so I think that at this point they realize they can't go into the Herald, and they're going to try to get some uh, Excavates off of this Chaos Ruler instead. I don't know, I've never seen Drytrons make this card before I played against this opponent, so uh, I'm not really too sure like how standard that is, but... Uh... Alright, so we get our turn here, and our opponent didn't have a Herald. Always, like, that's always a win. I mean, it's not an actual win, but you know what I mean. Always nice when you can go second against Drytron, they don't open with Herald. Opponent's going to activate Maxi in response to the Desires, which is definitely like an ugh, of course they did. Um, but, you know, we're actually going to be able to set up a bunch of plays without committing too many special summons. Which is one of Drytron's, or not Drytron's, Zodiac's many strengths. It's definitely not a strength of Drytron's. Uh, but Zodiac can actually establish its plays with, like, barely any special summons. Uh, we're going to bait our opponent's Orange Herald, by the way, because I know it's live, because I know they have a Natasha. So, I want to summon this kit and then bait it, because I've got the Keras and the Nerve Wall in my hand. Um, but, oh, but I don't have enough uh, Tri-Types, right, in Grave? Is that why I didn't do that? Or did I just not... Huh. Could I... Could I... Couldn't I have... Huh, maybe I'm missing something? Couldn't I have just pitched Keras and done more plays there? Am I just, like, dumb? Did I just think I was on turn one for some reason? I don't know. My opponent had a monster. I surely wouldn't, I wouldn't be that dumb. I don't know, though. My brain was pretty fizzled. Who even knows at this point, at this point right? Um, well, I guess if that's true, that's another uh, good example of a, a game to show where we misplay, but still come out on top. Which I do think is important to show. I touched on this in the last video, and in, in other videos, too, I touch on this. But uh, I, I like to show games where I misplay, but still win, because... The best part of, uh, or the, the most important part of having the best possible mindset, which is to, uh, you know, win despite anything else that's happening. The mindset is to only be looking for the correct play. Don't think about the fact that you misplayed. Don't think about the fact that your opponent got lucky. Don't think about the fact that you got unlucky. It's just all about finding the best play uh, in any given, literally any given scenario. But, uh, yeah, so we're able to, uh, what was it, called by our opponent there, uh, the Ben 10, and that's going to be enough to get them to concede. Called by, by the way, I wanted to mention this in one of these videos. I don't think I have, but uh, one thing I've realized playing against Drytron is like, of, of course, if you can go first against Drytron, that's obviously really good in general anyway, but called by is so so good to set turn one against Drytron because uh, then you can banish and negate their Ben 10 uh, and then they can't use it for the rest of the not only is that one negated but then they can't use it for like the whole rest of the turn so so good um, all right I just wanted to touch on that but uh, it's funny because that's not even gonna matter anymore especially by the time this actually comes out so 
All right, <laughs> let's just watch the next game already. And funnily enough, this next game is actually gonna be against the same opponent. That kind of happens a lot when you're like in, in upper ranks at the early season. I talked about this already too in a, in a previous video, but um, you know, when you're at these upper ranks early on in the season, you do tend to get matched against the same people a lot. So it almost becomes a bit of a camaraderie kind of a thing in a way. Uh, we got insanely lucky here matching against this opponent again and uh, going sec- or not, well, rather, we got insanely unlucky going second again, but we got insanely lucky in that our opponent actually just does not have a play at all. So, that's awesome. That's so, so awesome. Uh, we get to tanky here and then send a fractal, you know, do the typical fractal line. Gonna go ahead and summon that here. It's just a pretty typical one card combo. Our opponent's got the maxi, but we've got double ash because we're just the luckiest player in the world, so. <laughs> hey, you know what? Honestly, I, I needed a bit of luck after the climb I had. Let me tell you something. It was it, it was it was brutal. It was definitely brutal. And it's actually not even that lucky because as we can see, our opponent does have an orange herald here to negate the ash. So they will resolve the C. But uh, you know, like I mentioned in that last game, we can we can uh, get by on minimal summons with our combos. So we're only going to give them two draws as we then go into our um, Rugal and then search the revolt here. I'm trying to think, actually, if I had activated Bear Rum's effect. See, the problem is I didn't have any tri types to discard with Bear Rum. If I had had, if I had had, if I had had, hmm, if I'd had at least one, uh, you know, I could have. I think I might have been able to set up an OTK, but alas, we didn't. So, yeah, I'm gonna ash my opponent's Cyber Emergency here because I knew their hand was dead before. So any amount of searchers, that I'm gonna want to negate here. My opponent does have a Drytron Nova to follow up with, but we're just going to go ahead and max C in response to that, because, again, we want to be able to stop our opponent from, you know, just dumping all over us, basically. We do have the Imperm and the Revolt. Oh, excuse me, sorry about that. Yeah, we do have the Imperm and the Revolt, so I'm not too, too concerned, and our opponent's under max C, so, yeah, I'm not particularly concerned about what my opponent's going to be doing here. I think pretty much no matter what they do, I can stop it. Now, I actually should have probably bashed this Thuban when it was summoned. Um, that probably would have been the correct play in a vacuum. It ended up not really mattering here because my opponent had a, something to discard with Aldehyba anyway. But it would have been very easy for my opponent to not have anything else and then have to uh, you know, treat this Thuban for the Aldehyba. So, um, you know, that, that was technically a bit of a misplay. I should have banished earlier, but it ultimately is not going to really matter too, too much here. Another kind of minor misplay here is I actually, I, I sh if I wanted to uh, stop the Eva here, which I was kind of thinking about doing, I should have flipped up the um, Revolt in response to the resolution of the Eva getting equipped, so that way I could have banished it. Uh, it's still going to be fine here, though. And fortunately, we're actually able to bait the Maxi with the Rugal, which doesn't happen too often, but I still like to play this way in order, just in case that happens. Um, plus, then you get an extra summon with the Rugal as well. But, uh, yeah, no, we were actually able to beat the Max C, and then we can chain the Revolt to it. So our opponent's not going to get any draws from the Revolt. So, so nice when that works out that way. you got to love it. You really do. And then, of course, I'll get the uh, kit with the Rugal, since I'm going to be more than likely adding a Fractal and or a Keros anyway with this uh, Nerval Search off the uh, Revolt here. Alright, so my opponent does get the Eva search, which is a little bit annoying, but it's not the end of the world, especially given, like, how extensive my hand is going to be when it comes to, like, plays here. And I'm just going to go ahead and banish this Ben 10. That way my opponent can't, like, tribute it later or, like, yeah, wheel it back to, like, go into a Beatrice or something. Like, just given that board state, I think Ben 10 was by far the best card to banish in. Sure enough, that ends up being the case as my opponent goes ahead and surrenders here. You know what's kind of funly? Funly. You know what's kind of funny is after this game, though, even though I won two games against the same person, I didn't queue up right away. I just, like, waited a second, and then I queued up. Because you're more likely to queue into the same person if you, like, after the game ends, you just click, you know, go straight into the next game. Because your opponent's likely doing the same thing, and your opponent, or the, uh, the you know, the matchmaking system will be like, oh, you and your opponent, like, these two people just both opened up for games, so you just match them up right away. And then it just ends up being you and the person you just played against. So, um... Bit of a pro tip if you find yourself like matching up and ladder against the same person over and over and you're ready to be done playing against that person, just like wait a few seconds before you click duel uh, to go into your next game. Just a little, little like off, not even not off meta is what I was going to say, but like 
and outside of the actual gameplay. A very meta master duel tip there. Okay, let's go ahead and watch the next game. Alrighty, so this next game is going to be against another pure Zodiac. Was this? I think this was actually my second to last. I think I did actually have these last two games are going to be my last two games before Diamond 1. It was this one and the next one, I'm pretty sure, so. All right, let's watch these last two games here. All right, so I'm going to start by normal summoning the kit. I'm going to chain Maxi because I know all too well a normal summon the kit means they're going to go into Almirage. But my opponent's got the called by for the Maxi. That's a little unfortunate for me, but uh, still just the fact that my opponent normal summon the kit is still generally a pretty good sign for me. That uh, means they're not going to, hopefully, they're not going to do anything too, too crazy. And sure enough, they send the Nerval and then add the Keros here. That's pretty typical for the, you know, Kit into Almirage line. And then activating Keros' effect. Looks like they're sending another Kit in order to get their plays off here. Yep, going for the Bear Room, setting up the Revolt. We do have a Desires, which is really, really good. Um, because we only have the one Revolt, really, to bait out as far as, like, you know, responses go. And our opponent's only going to have one other card in hand, so they might have a Hand Trap, but with there only being one card, it's only one Hand Trap, and if they do, the odds are pretty low. And actually, they set a card, so never mind. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and draw for turn here. Drop what's actually a pretty decent draw. We can stop the Shurig Banish if we need to. Uh, we're going to Desires here, and that's a pretty poor Desires, getting another Desires and another Droplet. Cards you can only use once per turn, so... Desires did pretty much nothing here except serve to Banish. Um, nothing too, too bad. I mean, all of our Ashes, but I don't, we don't really need Ashes anymore in this game. That's given where the, the uh, board state is at. Alright, so I decided to normal summon the Fractal instead of going for the Zodiac here, because I know I can negate the Shurig with the uh, Forbidden Droplet anyway, and I think I want to summon this Fractal, banish you for Ferragite, and then use the Ferragite in order to summon the Ram Ram, is how I want to do it here. So, like I said, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do the Droplets. I'll send um, the Resolving... Wait, was that the Resolving Desires? Or no, that was the Desires in my hand, right? Yep, no, I was thinking of a different game I had on ladder. I know we're going to send the Desires in our hand, because obviously we can't use it this turn, and it's probably not going to be too useful moving forward anyway. Um, opponent does have the Fractal here, which is a little bit annoying, but... Uh, oh, no, sorry, I thought this was a, a game where we did this. Did I not show this in one of these games? I think I might in the next one. Hopefully I do. Because I did this a couple of times where my opponent goes to negate my Tri Brigade monster that's summoning something, uh, you know, Link monster. And then I end up chaining Droplet. Oh, but of course I already Droplet, so I couldn't. Never mind. But uh, yeah, of course you can, uh, if like your Fractal that's activating to summon a Link monster is getting impermed like that, uh, was just there, and you have a Droplet available to use, you can Droplet, send the Fractal, and then actually still get the search because the it won't get negated because it's no longer on field for imperm to negate it. So, okay, I wanted to actually pause and talk about this for a second. Oops. Because uh, this was something that went by kind of quickly, but something I thought pretty long about. So my opponent normal summon this Fractal, right? And of course they normal summon, and I'm like, okay, I've got the drop, but I can just flip it up and, and negate it, and then I'll banish like the Rugo or something. But then I saw they only banish two cards. Now, I also knew they had a Keros, and I think I, I know they have another Tri-Type in hand. Um, but I knew they had a Keros, and I saw them only banish two cards. So I'm like, well, if they're only banishing two, they can only summon Ferrajit, Double Dragon Lords, or Bear Room, right? So that's actually totally fine with me. I don't necessarily even need to stop that. But I'll go ahead and stop their next thing if it's more threatening. So sure enough, I let them summon the Ferragite and then the Chaos, and then as they go to Banish 4 to summon a Shurig, then I'm like, okay, no, 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 we have to, we have to stop that, so. Yep, we can go ahead and Droplet there and get rid of that. So opponent is going to move into their own Shurig here, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate for us. I actually probably should have just flipped Revolt uh, right then. Well, I guess they could have gotten a Shurig either way, but... We're actually not going to be able to banish, banish bleh, if I can stop like being tongue-tied here. <laughs> uh, it's been a long night, let me just say that. Um, yeah, so this Revolt, uh, even though we're going to get to summon a Shurig, we're actually not going to get to banish with our Shurig, because the way the chain link is going to break down, we're going to summon our Shurig, and then the opponent's Shurig is going to activate its effect, banishing ours. And since our Shurig is no longer on board for the resolution of its effect, it's not going to get to activate. Um, which, you know, sucks, but we still get the Nerve Link Kit here. Kit's gonna actually go ahead and send a Revolt, so that way we still have something to search. You know, the Keras here, we don't want to send quite all of our stuff. Our opponent's gonna get to battle for quite a bit of damage, but that's fine. You know, as long as we're not hitting zero. 
Uh, one thing to remember about your life points always is that your life points are a resource, not a score. That's the best way to think, and that doesn't just apply for Yu-Gi-Oh! That applies to literally every single TCG out there. Your life total is not a score, it is a resource. And what I mean by that is that, like, you can take some damage if it means surviving to the next turn and then getting the win. Like, don't be scared of taking, like, you know, we took 5,300 damage there, but that shouldn't scare you. The only thing that should scare you is being threatened to, to go down to zero. That's the only damage that really, really matters, is the damage that puts you to zero. Everything before that, whatever. It's, it's, it, I don't want to say it's irrelevant, but, um, it's not the deciding factor. And again, sometimes you can use your life as a resource to ex enable a certain plays or, you know, stall for a little bit, not use a resource to blood, or to, you know, chump a hit instead of take the damage and use it to combo next turn. Speaking of combos here, um, since we actually have another Zodiac monster in Grave, uh, we can Dryden't, or it's not because we have another Zodiac monster in Grave, but because our opponent has something for us to Dryden't, we can actually use the Dryden to pop our opponent's monster, and then we get to, um, you know, overlay into Chalkinane, and summon something back, go into Ferrajit, summon the Chaos in our hand, and then go into even more plays. I'll go into Race Holger here just to put back one of the Tri-Types, just in case it ends up mattering. I don't think it really will, but just in case. And of course, I don't want to pop the Shurig with the Dryden. I want to banish it with my Shurig, so that way my opponent doesn't get a search here. So it's funny, yeah, even though we had like a mediocre start and it looks like our opponent had the upper hand for a good portion of the game, uh, we were still able to come out right at the end there with that uh, Zodiac combo. It's another thing I see a lot is people asking in the comments, not like a lot, but often enough, like, hey, what are some combo lines? Like, can you do combo lines with the Zodiacs? And that's, a you know, I wanted to show this game because that's a neat little combo line we did right there. All right, we've got one more game to show off in this video. Let's go ahead and move right on to it. Okay, so this last game here is going to be against Numeron. This, is, this isn't just the last game of the video, by the way. This was the last game of the climb for me. Uh, this was the game where I went from Diamond 2 to Diamond 1 after winning this one. So, um, our opponent's going to let us go first because, of course, they're Numerons. Uh, we're going to lead with Desires. No response there. Good. So, we're going to go ahead and tank in. Since we have the Nerval, we can actually do the... Yeah, speaking, hey, speaking of using Zodiac as a combo pieces... Uh, we have Tanky plus Nerval, so we can do that combo line. Um, if you want to be more familiar with what how exactly the combo line plays out, because I'm not going to stop and explain it, the combo's already started, uh, feel free to check out the description where you will find my Zodiac tri Brigade combo guide, and that will detail um, how you pull off this combo with Tanky and then either Kit or Nerval. It's going to end on a 3 Material Appalooza, a Double Dragon Lord, and a Revolt. Which is obviously the ideal turn one setup for Trizia. Well, technically, it's possible to do a four material Appalooza and a double Dragon Lord, but that very, very, very rarely happens. So, this is the the general ideal, the like realistic ideal, I guess we'll say. All right, so we're gonna go into get Bearbrum, and then we get the searches from the Shurig and the Nerval here to get Keros, and then just something to pitch with Keros doesn't really matter. I usually just get either Kit or Nerval. All right, and then yep, activate Keros, pitch to Kit, summon, then we can. Oh yeah, we haven't even used Kit yet, so we can do that real quick, and then we'll banish two for Keros, summon the double Dragon Lord, and link the three monsters here into good old Appalooza. And then we've even got a Droplet here, just in case our opponent does anything like too too scary. In addition to the Revolt, that of course we'll be searching as well. And we can put back the Fractal, because we'll end up getting a Tri-Brigade search with the Revolt anyway. So, yep, obviously a very, very solid start. You love to see it. Poet's going to actually lead with Dark Hole, and this animation is so cool. It's a f I've seen, you know, I've seen the videos of it on Reddit, on the subreddit before, but I've never actually seen that, that animation myself before. It's weird that a, an old, relatively obscure card like Dark Hole gets that animation, but, uh... Yep, we can see why our opponent's running Dark Hole now. Of course, it is because they are a Numeron player. But actually, by Dark Holing, I mean, of course, they couldn't have gotten this this Numeron network off if I had Appalooza and Double Dragon Lord up, sure. But uh, since they Dark Hold, I no longer have any monsters on the field. So my opponent can't actually OTK me. They can do 4,000 and then go into, like, a, 
either the uh, Chaos Gate number one or an Appalooza, but they can't actually win this turn, so that's really, really good for me. Obviously, I don't want to flip up my Revolt just yet, because if I did, then I'd have monsters for them to attack, and then I would get OTK. And like I mentioned earlier, they're just going to go... Actually, they don't go into Appalooza, they go into uh, Mech Knight Crusader Avermax here. Which is totally fine with me, because... As we all know, Shurig does not target, so uh, this card being unable to be oops, this card being unable to be targeted does not matter in the slightest. Nor does the effect that activates when it's set from field to grave, because Shurig, as we know, banishes. Shurig really is just like the ultimate boss monster. It gets around like almost literally everything. It's it's kind of nuts. It's a little ridiculous, I'll admit. An opponent does actually have the droplet here, though, so that's a uh, that's a little bit intimidating until you realize like oh wait it's the opponent's in phase and we get a surge, so we're just gonna go ahead and you know get a special summon anyway next turn. As long as they don't have a, a scary hand trap to stop us here, we are totally in the clear. And sure enough, I'm gonna go ahead and normal summon the fractal, banish, banish, banish for the race vulgar. Uh, that lets me get the. Uh, banished there with the with the uh, Shurig, and then sure enough, that was it. That was it right there. That was the last game. And at this point, I was now in, and am now in Diamond One. Ah, it feels so good. It feels so so good. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the deck as always for the outro here. Okay, everybody, I want to thank you, as always, for watching to the end of the video like this. That means a whole lot to me. It really, really does. And not just the support in this video, but the support in all the videos. Like, I got really, like, not really, but, like, you know, I got uh, uh, sentimental at the end of the last video, too. And I'll do it a little bit here as well. Uh, I really wouldn't be able to, to do the laddering I do or have the motivation to do it. Um, without you guys, I really, really wouldn't. Not only, you know, the advice you guys offer in the comments, that's so, so helpful. I love seeing your guys' comments. Um, but also just by supporting, just by watching. Literally, even if you don't watch the end of the video and you're not <laughs> listening to this right now, um, by watching, you give me motivation to keep trying to be a better and better player. And that, in turn, you know, helps grow me as a player and the channel as well. Like, it just kind of is, like, feeding into itself. And it's so cool to see. Like, I have such an awesome community. You guys are so, so good, great. I was going to say good, but you guys are great. You're excellent. You're fantastic. And I love each and every one of you for your supports. Um, without further ado, <laughs> before I get even more touchy-feely, this is Hexlex. I'm signing out, and I hope you have a fantastic day.